right at seven.
Think about something for which you are thankful. Friends, family, food, good health, and we'll write our responses on cut out turkeys. <gasps> so cute. Um, and they'll be posted on a giant bulletin board in the science building right across from us. Lastly, a reminder that being a part of a strong community helps us become more resilient. We challenge you to help build our community by participating in a community event over this week, such as re re uh, leaf raking, an athletic event, so like a soccer game, uh, the fall performance, or the food drive, which I told you about yesterday, which I'll go over again today. Again, today, 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 is the Ski and Snowboard Club meeting, which I think you were interested in, okay? So that is during milk break in Lock Lounge. Do you know where that is, DJ? Yeah. Okay. Um, so again, if you can't make it, you can email or get in contact with Mr. Kudzowski or Mr. Lawson. There is an international group meeting today and tomorrow. One for residents is today from 6 to 7 at actual Liberty. One for days since is tomorrow during milk break for May Park. All right, so Mr. Eppinger for the Performing Arts Department, the Landmark Stage Company proudly presents the Red Velvet Cake War, Thursday, November 8th, and Friday, November 9th, starting at 7.30 p.m. Doors open at 7, and it goes all the way through Saturday. Okay, so if you're interested in seeing that, again, it's free admission. You can email this email, and if you want it, you can send it out. Is that what you want? Stop club meeting during milk break is tomorrow. You guys are old enough to do club drive. Is anyone volunteering for that? And then also there is the Thanksgiving food drive. So again, we're collecting cans of food, different type of food, types of food that won't go bad. Um, so you can bring those to the library for the fireplaces. Um, and then again, if we reach our goals, the whole community will get like a prize and a um, it ends Friday of next week. Again, no after school activities today until next Monday, this coming Monday. Um, the volleyball tournament, this is new. Volleyball tournament is next week. It's Wednesday and Thursday, okay? So if you're not on a team, you can try to find a team. Um, rosters are due Tuesday of next week, so the day before. It's a lot of fun. I'm happy. You're doing what? It's a volleyball tournament. You know what I'm saying? Are you good? Yeah. I mean, I did make it to um the last round, the championship thing during eighth period. During eighth period, there's a huge game. Y'all go and watch it on Thursday, I guess. One of those days. This week. Um, next week before Thanksgiving break, and then oh, the last two yeah, teams standing, they they duke it out. So it's really fun. So year. you were in the last round. I know. I know. I'm not really that good with sports. Um, so yeah, you can try to get on a team. That concludes today's announcements, questions, comments, concerns. Alright. Hopefully you guys have had a, a chance to work on the warm-up that's on the board. If you have not, you should do so right now. I'll give you four minutes, like two more minutes to finish up. If you are done, I will take your time. Does someone want to explain to um, my two little pals over here what we're doing tomorrow? Yeah, it's called my favorite no, right? So then after you guys hand in your cards, what do we do? It's not just what I like or don't like, <laughs> but what was good about the poem? Like, what did the student do well, and then what did they need to work on, right? Okay. Yes, it is important. Here you go, Sylvia. So thank you very much. All right. Kai, you all good? Yep. Bad on your yellow sheet? No bad one. This one? No, you had your hand in. Yes, you did. Okay. So, I'm going to tell you 
So we need to work on um, parentheses. Even though they put in parentheses, we need to work on input in parentheses. I didn't do any of that. But I don't I think I got an iPhone. So I have one person who didn't put parentheses, which is fine. Up to seven more positive. Same thing with this person. And same thing with this person. All three of these people did it the same way. Work on, or are we all set? We're all set? Okay. So, again, be careful with the parentheses and keeping that negative separate when your input is not actually negative. Okay? All right, great. Next up on the agenda, can I actually appoint someone to check off my to do list as we go along? Oh, good question. Let me show where the yes is. Mine. Oh. Right, so no parentheses are used, but in this case, because seven was positive, you don't necessarily need it. Alright. So again, can I have a volunteer to check off? Thank you, Kyle. Alright. Next up, what's your jelly foam? Aren't you guys glad to be free of this current jelly foam? I hope we never have to do anything like it ever. Oh, you certainly will. Maybe not as brand a picture, but. Alright. Um, I guess I don't need these. Yeah. Yeah. So I have all recycled for you. Yes. Yeah. Um, okay, your name is on that. Can you put your name on this? Thank you. Hi, were you able to find yours? No. Okay. So I'll print you a new one, right? And you can do redo it over the weekend, okay? Okay. Your name on it. Do you have your name on it? Um, All right, great. And your homework should be out. We're going to co um, correct that right now. We don't all have the same problem. That is a-okay. I'm prepared for such an occasion. All right, so with this answer key though, the work is not shown. Okay, so what should you be doing as we correct it? My answer key does not have the work shown. What were you going to say, Olivia? Yeah, checking. You're going to be looking for your answer to fix it. So these are good problems if you get some wrong to re-practice on your own to study for the quiz on Friday. So it's a quiz, not a test? It's a quiz, not a test. Are we allowed to use the mic or no? No. The first one without your notebooks. See if you can find the error, and if not, you might want to ask a question or ask for me to show one task that you need. Questions? Yeah. Okay. Which one would you like? Four. Four. Okay. Same. Same for you. All right. So we're going to do number four. Did you try to look for your own error? Yeah. No. Okay. I, I just 
It says I get negative six squared, which is negative thirty six, and then plus oh. two, which a negative and a positive. But I think I may have already found your error. Yeah. All right, so here's number four, correct? Yeah. As we just talked about, what is super crucial specifically when you have negative inputs? No, because this one, the negative isn't a part of the original equation. This one is actually a part of the input. So should this one go outside of the parentheses or inside? Inside, okay? So DJ, walk me through what you would now do. Negative six squared. Okay, and negative six is in parentheses or not in parentheses? Negative six in parentheses. Okay. Squared. Squared. Okay. Plus two. All right. So now, if you want to use your calculator, what's negative six squared? And again, if this is in parentheses, how should we type it in our calculators? In parentheses. In parentheses. Okay. Thirty-six. Positive thirty-six. Negative oh times a negative. Why or on the, on the normal one. Because this number, this negative was right here and not right there. So when it's a oh, part so of the input, it right. was outside. Okay. Correct. Yeah. It's a good distinction to make. So this would have equaled yeah. one. Okay. Other questions, comments, concerns? So these are take plus these. I sure did. No, it is not. No, it is not. If you are done with this, you can take out your notebooks. We're going to kind of dive right into notes today just because we're going to be using a lot of our graphing calculators. And we're going to be adding in these. Number five. Oh, number five. There's a lot of exponents here. This is a good one. All right. So, Olivia, what did you do? I did the Yeah. Plus five and then three minus three minus three. Okay. And what did you get as answers? To how do you do the next step? Um, what was my final answer? Not your final answer, but like what was the next step that you did? Then we just did a five and three. Okay. And then I got ten squared. So you got ten squared? Okay. So order of operations states before I do multiplication, which is what five times two is, what do I have to do first? Ten back. So I actually have to do this part first before I get 5 times 2 equals 10. Yeah. So that's where your error was. So it should have been 5 times, what's 2 squared? Yeah. And then 2 cubed, you didn't answer that one. Okay. So we have 8 plus 5 times 4, 5 times 4 is? Plus eight gives us twelve. All right. Anyone else for the homework? No. no. All right. So let's transition to notes. If you guys could um, open up to your table of contents page, so that's the blue page. Are we not going to finish the orange sheet? Um, not today. I think I might do that for a warm-up tomorrow. Because mm. those are very similar to what we've been working on the past two days. All right. We're moving on. Hi, would you mind checking off my to-do list that I've done? All right. So today, we're going to be working on graphing functions with input and output. Utilizing function notation. So I had you guys put in a page 4 5. 5 is actually going to cover two birds with one stone. Okay? 
So we're going to also put page five right here. We're skipping through representations of a function, although we are touching upon it today. We are essentially doing it, but I'm going to make that a separate page. So, um, Graphing okay. functions with input, output. And then when you have that written down, I'm going to pass out double-sided tape. Wait, what was number five? Because I have five. So five is going to cover two topics. So here's, oh, four, let's see, one, two, three, four. Oh, it's because you took two pages for the five parent function. So this, two through three, so yours is going to be page six. Okay, yeah. and then what's five? So, oh, function. function notation. Yeah. All right, so take a tape roll and pass it down. And then you are going to tape in this yellow. So there is a chance that I did not have it. Oh no, no, I found it. Great. Mine and the yellow, but mine have the same pages as yours. And then you're going to want to have your graphing calculator next to it. We're going to be doing a ton of skills with the graphing calculator today. I'm very excited. I actually learned something new last night from Ms. Willingham, who's right over here. And my mind was like blown. <laughs> like, I can't believe I've been doing this. Like, I'm about to make your guys' life so much easier. It's going to be great. Yeah. All right. So, we have this graphic organizer. So, I want you guys to get used to using graphic organizers that look something like this. They might be um, similar, they might be a little bit different. For example, tonight on your homework, you're going to have a graphic organizer, but it's going to look a little differently. Okay? So, I'll make sure to do one of the problems on the homework page with you, so that you know exactly what you should be doing. Okay. All right. So we started working with function notation. Does someone remember what notation means? Um, what does the word notation look like? Oh. It is, function notation is exactly that. The word notation kind of looks like the word note, right? Um, so we write notes. So it's a specific way of writing about a function. Okay, which we're going to continue practicing today. Um, so you guys have been practicing replacing x with a, a number that goes into that set of parentheses and x goes in that set. Okay? Um, so we're going to connect input and output with graphing. Even though you guys just finished graphing Deshaun Watson, the graphing continues and it shall continue all year long. It'll be great. Okay. 
Alright, so in order to graph this graph, no, you need an actual function. So let's use a linear function. What do linear functions look like when they're graphed? Now, what is this? you're right. You verbalize this? Like what kind of line is it? Yeah, so what does that line look like? And anyone can answer this. Sylvia? It could be diagonal. Sometimes they're straight up and down. Sometimes they're straight horizontal. Linear, yeah. So linear means... That is what it is, yeah. Something can be described as linear, though, but the word linear also means straight. So a lot of the other functions we use have curved lines, right? So this is just a straight line. So we're going to be using a linear function. What does a linear function or a linear equation look like? And you can use your past notes on this. What does it include? It includes a linear function. An X. An X. Is there anything else? So there might be other numbers, right? But yeah. are there any exponents? No. Are there any funky math symbols other than add, subtract, multiply, divide? No. Nope. Okay, so this one just involves x and maybe a few other um, swanky numbers in there. So the equation we're going to use today is f of x equals 2x plus 3. So note the multiplication x has with 2, and then afterwards 3 is going to get added. We're going to do a little bit of vocab review. So take a look at this column right here. What is the label for this column? Sylvia? Input. Input. Input represents which value, x or y? Y. So if we have function notation f of x, when we change this, what usually gets put in its place? Mm. A number that's an input or a number that's an output? Input, okay? So actually inputs we're going to associate with the x value, the x part of our coordinate pair. So not only do I want you to write x here, but we also have x in our ordered pair. x in our ordered pair. So, um, x shows us that we're going to go in which direction? Up or down or left and right? Left. left and right, so horizontal. Good. All right. So, we have our input. These are going to serve as all the different input values we're going to plug in to our function. So, we practiced doing that yesterday. What do you notice, though, about all of these values? Numbers 1 through 4, yeah, exactly. So we go all the way from negative 4 to positive 4. So these are sequence numbers. They're just in order. Okay. All right. So now what I want to do, we're going to actually use function notation just as we did yesterday. So when I replace x with negative 4, right, so we usually write that in function notation as f of negative 4. How is that going to change? my function given at the very top. What am I going to do with this function? Good. So we're going to do these first two rows by hand. We're going to practice using function notation. So it's 2 times negative 4. Negative 8 plus 3. What's negative 8 plus 3? 5. Negative 5. Good. All right, so negative 5 is my answer. Therefore, another word for my answer is output. So I'm going to put negative 5 in my output column. 
So when I put x in, I'm going to get out a value that's going to represent the y change. y represents the output, y represents the answer, okay? So what should go in this set of parentheses under the label of output? This is x, this should be y. So then the output is just the answer. So now in my ordered pair, I have my input represented by x and my output or answer represented by y. So now let's put those points together and make one ordered pair that I can plot. DJ. Can you swap them around and like, and like, I don't, I don't Can you re-verbalize that? Can you swap the variables? Like, swap the like, variables? I remember you told me the last year where you did that. So you mean like if we changed x to w? No, no, like if we would change y to x. Like just a big, mm. it, like a different. Like a different order? Yeah. yeah. And I, I don't remember doing that. I so wouldn't suggest that. Distributive property. So you can, yeah. are you, oh, are you thinking about reordering the terms? Maybe. Because the terms with variables have to come first when we write an expression. Is that what you're yeah, thinking of? So this is separate from that. Okay. This is a coordinate point, but I like how you're connecting that there's variables in that and that we follow an order. Okay? So we always put x first and y second in an ordered pair. So that way we always do our horizontal movement first and then our vertical movement second. Okay? So what should be my new ordered pair if I'm putting together x and y in a So here, what is x though? Oh, negative. Negative 4. So I'm going to put oh, negative oh, 4 oh, oh, in the x place. Like and what's going to go in the y place? Three. Not 3. Or negative 5. Negative 5. Good. So this is the new point I'm going to plot down here. Okay. So please plot negative 4 comma negative 5. And Olivia, remember the first number, we go horizontally. So I'm going to start at the origin, and I'm going to go left, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then down 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. I'm going to plot it out. All right. Now what I want you guys to do is I want you to do the second one, this one, where the input is negative 3, and I want you to do that independently. And you can and is, the, is the output 5? The output is not 5. So... I would check to make sure your negatives oh, oh, are oh. correct. No, no. Why do you get two after, or why do you get plus three? This one right here? Yeah. So my equation up top says 2x plus three, Jeff. So they are. And then after you get that point, I want you to plot it on your graph below. Wait, so negative 3, negative 3, why would it be both negative 3? Like, because up top it says 4, negative 4, negative 5, so why would it be the same number? So this one, it just happens that the output happens to be equivalent or equal to the input. There's not a pattern there other than... Later on, when we in-depth study linear functions, you will see that there is a pattern. But these two values that are the same, there's not a, a connection other than when I put negative 3 in, we happen to get negative 3. Okay. Okay. Sylvia? Not yet, but I like, we're going to get there. Yes. Okay. okay, not yet. All right, so now we're going to use our calculator, which I'm super excited for. Ms. Hulahan is also very excited, right? So what I would like you guys to do is turn on your calculators. And because we use our calculators to solve math problems, I'm sure a lot of you do it. You do it on quizzes, you do it on homework, whatever. We're going to type that function in with our next input on our calculator. So I'm going to model this. So I'm going to type in 2. I'm going to use my parentheses. And now I'm going to input my new input. So negative 2. 
And instead of showing my work manually because I'm using the calculator, I'm just going to write f of negative 2. That's my function notation. And then I'm going to bring my attention back to my calculator. I'm going to close my parentheses. I'm going to press plus 3. So you all should have exactly what I have <coughs> on your own calculators. Everyone have that. All right. Press enter. What do we get as an output? Negative, negative 1. So I'm going to write negative 1 in my chart. I'm going to create my ordered pair. So there's negative 2, comma, negative 1. And then what do I do next? Plot it. Plot it. Wait, are you sure that's negative 1? Are you unsure it's negative 1? So, did you get something else on your calculator? No. Oh. But I just did it right here. So you did it. So if you're doing it right here, so 2 times negative 2 equals? Negative 1. Ah, no. What's 2 times 2? Oh, negative 4. Uh -huh. Okay, so you should get negative 4, and then negative 4 plus 3 should give you negative 1. Yeah. All right. This is the cool part, you guys. Do not clear your screen. Oh, shoot. Type it back in. Press enter again. You're going to want to learn this. I guarantee it, okay? It doesn't matter. It doesn't? Just go up. It doesn't matter if you clear it. This is the best. Okay. Up. All right. Press second. So that's the blue button. Then press enter down at the bottom. Do you see? I know. I know. I'm getting the excited part. Do you see how it has the exact same format as yeah. above, right? But what is the new input I want to find the output for? One. Negative 1, right? Do I have to rewrite no. the whole equation? No, what do I do? What can I do? Yeah! So instead of even press clear, you can just press 1 over it. And then press enter. Yeah. Okay. Alright, you guys ready? Yeah. Okay. Alright, so we're going to do this first. Alright, so Second, enter, and do it for the next input. This one, because it's zero, you do need to get rid of that negative sign, so you might want to press delete. Oh my. Okay. It takes a couple of tries to get used to it. I got the same answer as when I had the number. Oh, wait, now I didn't. I just found a negative. Alright, so we have f of 0 now. Did anyone get an output for when x is equal to 0? 3. 3, good. So, Sylvia, what's my new ordered pair? 1, 0, 3. 0, 3. Alright, now because we got so excited, I've forgotten to plot my last couple points. So let's do that. So we have negative 1, 1, 0, 3. I'm going to blow your minds again. In your calculators, you guys already know how to type in equations into y equals, correct? All right, so I want you to type in this equation. This y is a negative. Huh? It is a negative. It should be. Okay. So if you type in in your y equals screen, okay, if you type in 2x plus 3, do you have like a squared or an exponent somewhere in there, TJ? Um, negative 2. Plus three. So DJ, I want you to be with me on the calculator, okay? So y equals 2x oh. plus three. Yeah. Everyone got that? Except for DJ? Yeah. So y equals three. I'm so excited for you guys. Alright. 
So we know how to get the graph, right? What would I press if I wanted the graph? Yeah. Graph. Pretty easy. Now, we're making a table of values. That's what this is. This graphic organizer is a table of values. What if I told you the calculator would do it for you? All of this. It's exciting, right? I'm going to tell you how it does it because it does. All right. If you press second, the blue button, then press graph. Second. Oh, dang. I. Press what? Dang. Second. Yeah. Graph. Like hold them together. Do not hold down second. Just press it. So you have a blinking arrow. <gasps> I know. I know. It's life changing. Okay. So you can use the up and down buttons to to find negative or positive x values. So you'll see that this one is labeled as x. This is the y column, the output for your first equation. Okay? Mm -hmm. So can we just fill in the rest of our table using these answers? Yeah. Let's do it. I think you need to. I know! I know! I'm so excited. So don't forget though that in your graphic organizer, you still need to write function notation for each of these. So f of one, f of two, f of three. So I now no longer have to manually show my work because I'm going to trust the calculator. Do we always want to trust the calculator? No. No, because sometimes we type things in differently than it would read it. But right now it's pretty trustworthy. So I'm just going to straight up copy from my calculator. So 1 has an output of 5, 2 has an output of 7, 3 is 9, and 4 is 11. I do need to wrap up my lesson, but I want you to finish this by writing the ordered pairs using your input and output, and then I want you to graph it and have my hands out in the order so you can connect it later on. The only one you will not be able to plot is 4 from 11 because 11 is outside of my graph range. page that looks similar to this. The one thing I would add is put arrows on at the end of your line because these lines keep on going. I'm going to come around and check to make sure you're calm. So just extend these lines and put arrows on it a little bit. Put arrows on it. Nice job. I'm going to give you the homework. No, we're not doing all of these, otherwise that would be a little scary, wouldn't it? <laughs> you want me to keep that to myself? You guys were excited and I was excited, but I can't keep it to myself. No, you cannot tell it to yourself. Oh, Alright, so it looks like everyone's done with their notes. So you're going to bring your notebooks home to reference this. Okay? So this is the homework. You're not going to do all of them because there are a lot of them, but you are going to need your graphing calculator. Okay? So you're going to want to bring those home. So right now, we're going to do the first one together using our calculators again so you get used to pressing the buttons. Okay? So put your name on it. Today's date. And because we're going to be using our calculators, I'm given the equation, I'm given 
the graph to graph it, and I'm given a simplified chart, okay? It's going to have the same information, but it's more compact, and it has less columns of graph. So on your calculator, I don't know what, off why you just... If you press second mode next to it. Wait, so we can't use the same graph then? So this is a different equation. This equation is oh, 6x okay. plus 1. So we're going to do it on our calculator. So we're going y equals x. You are. Okay. And what are we typing in? Six parentheses. Do I need parentheses here? Yeah. yeah. 6x plus 1. And then something. Second. Enter. Not enter. That's okay. when you're typing it in manually. Okay. okay. But I want the table of values. I press second. Yeah. Graph. The word, the button, or the graph button has the word table above it, okay? So this is where we're going to input our answers. So it says f of x equals, so when x is equal to negative 3, what is my answer? Um, it says negative 17. Negative 17, so I'm going to write negative 17 here. What's going to go in this column? x, y, the ordered pair. What is the ordered pair for the first point, Sylvia? So you don't plot it? Nope. We're only going to plot the ones that we can fit on our graph. Right? I want you guys to quickly fill out the, this remaining f of x column, at least. Because you should have all the answers on your calculator already. So you can use your up and down arrows. So you're at positive 1 right now. You need to be x equals negative 3. So you need to find negative 3. Those are bigger positives, you want to go up. So what are you going to finish for on this problem for homework? Writing the coordinate points and then graphing them. Which points will you be able to plot? The one of them. Oh, no, no. Only, only negative one. one. Negative four of them. Only three of them, actually. Three. Okay. So these ones, and right in the middle, with the x's, those are the only ones you're going to be able to plot on that graph, okay? All right. So for homework, you are only doing the second problem on the first page. Like the second table? The second problem. So this problem right here. That one right there. And we still have to finish the up top. And you just have to finish the up top one, okay? Thank you. Don't move on. I got two more minutes, man. Wait, what are we doing? How are we doing this one too? Yep. So you're doing the whole first page. You're going to finish this one, and you're going to oh. do this one for homework, okay? Hi, you know what you got for homework? Yeah. So are you good? Yeah. All right. So the last thing, I have intended to give you guys a little bit more time for this, but I am going to pass out a ticket to leave. So once you fill this out, you will be free to leave, Joe. Okay. So take a seat. You need a pencil. There are two prompts on this. It says write down one thing you learned today and write down one question you still have or one skill you need to continue working on. Once I have this, you are free to go.
right, DJ? You tune in. You're a champ, Olivia. See you tomorrow.